take back the power of your body. Raise your vibration. You have the power to claim your destiny. You're diagnosed with cancer at the age of 13. What can be going through the mind of someone at 13? What is cancer? You go for the chemotherapy, the treatment. It's taken care of, it's good. It comes right back. And you go through it all over again and then it comes back a third time. What goes through your mind? Do you believe? Do you believe in doctors, God? Here is Beatrice's story and here is her message for you. My name is Beatrice, nice to meet everyone, and um, I am a three-time cancer survivor. Extreme, I know, I know, but three times, three times, yeah, amazing. So my first, my journey starts firstly when I was 13. When I was 13, I got diagnosed with a sarcoma, it's called Ewing's sarcoma. And it started in my left scapula. And I'm gonna show you guys the scar. This is my scar. Okay, so that, I was diagnosed at 13 with that. I had the regular chemotherapy. I had radiation. I had a surgery to remove the bone, the cancer that was in the bone. Um, I survived, you know, praise God I survived. I didn't even think of fear at that moment. There was no fear that came through my mind because I was so young and I had so much trust in my doctors that I just said, okay, it's a regular obstacle in my life that I have to face. At the age of 13, I was thinking this. And I remember when I was in the hospital, I saw my hair and I was like, man, I'm gonna lose my hair. Pretty much the only thing I thought the first day they told me that. And you know, such a naive young, you know, young girl, obviously I'm gonna think something that's not around the lines of, oh, you're gonna die. No. Yeah. I just thought about the most simple thing. Oh, my hair, you know, I'm gonna lose it. And after that, I just, I did the chemotherapy. I remember throwing up many times because of the chemo, but I just told myself, you just gotta keep going. Doctors know best. You're gonna make it through this. I had emotional support, which is the best thing to have. Going through a cancer journey is, emotional support, which will bring a regular stagnant, you know, like um, healing process to an even more uh, just a mental healing as well, because it, it does affect mentally so much being at the edge of death and, and not knowing what's gonna happen. But if you have that emotional support and you have trust, then that will elevate so much. So, okay, so I survived after the age of 13. I lost the hair, but then I gained it back again. I gained a couple pounds and then I lost it again. And I had a regular life, you know, I had a, let's talk about my diet. Okay, I had a regular American Cuban diet because I'm Cuban. I was raised here in the States, but I was born in Cuba. I came when I was very young. So I have two cultures embedded into my persona. And I had that, you know, regular American diet, cheeseburgers, fries, mac and cheese. And then I had the Cuban diet, which is pork, uh, rice and beans, yuca, you know, like fried everything and uh, fast food. I mean, I was a hungry girl, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I was skinny because in my jeans, I was skinny, but no one ever, my mother was like, okay, temperance, you need to not eat so much. You need to, you're young, you can enjoy yourself but you need to like, you know, like cool down. And I would never listen. Obviously I was a young kid, I was a young teenager. So I never listened. And then when I was 21, I got cancer a second time. Wow. And yeah, and it was still the same cancer. It was still an Ewing sarcoma cancer. And I remember it was 21, just I had started college and I was, you know, having fun, going out, doing what a regular 21 year old does at that age, you know, going to school, trying to have their life as planned out as you can, as being a young kid. And I remember they, I went into the ER and I was hoping and praying that, you know, that it wasn't going to be cancer. 
but it was cancer and they had found it in my right distal femur. And they said, okay, after this, we have to just start chemotherapy again, like we did when you were 13. Because I went to my same oncologist as a young kid. He was, I was here in Miami. So he said, let's, let's do what, you know, what the protocol says. I did the chemo for a couple months. I think it was around six or seven months around there. I didn't do radiation. I did have a surgery. They did remove the cancer from the bone. They removed the distal part. Yeah, it was tough. It was a tough one. It was a lot of pain. There was a lot of physical and mental trauma because of it. But through this whole course, this journey of cancer, I was coping with marijuana. So, and with a lot of friends. So coping with marijuana, having it as my God, basically as an idol. And when I got out of cancer and I survived, I you know went through the therapy. I went through everything. I was very positive always, but I had that coping mechanism, which was marijuana. And my friends obviously there with me and my family praying for me as well. And they were always praying for me. And I have to just praise God because I'm here because he gave me all the strength to even be here. Okay, so I had to deal with that after the cancer. Um, it helped me, the marijuana did help. But after that, then I had to deal with that addiction because it became an addiction. Because after not having a medical illness, you're like, okay, I'm here. Now, how do I get out of this? Listen. You know, And in the moment, I didn't realize how much I was really relying on it. I was like, okay, after the cancer, I'll be fine. I'm not gonna have to be to smoke that much. But I realized that I was smoking, not just now because of physical pain, but because of mental pain. And I had trauma because ah, of the cancer. You see. So because then came in fear, after that came in fear, oh, will I have it again? What if, you know, I only have a couple years to live? I'm so young, why me? You know, I went through all this thought process, why me? You know, I could have done so much, like I, I've wasted so many years of my life uh, because of chemo, uh, because, because of cancer and chemo and, and dealing with this and just healing. But I was still positive. I went through this stage where I was like, okay, why me, all this? But then I went back to my positivity. Good. When, with cancer, you know it, you go through your ups and downs. Yeah. You know, it's like an emotional roller coaster, we like to call it. And you deal with that because you have to, because it's, it is life. Life, even if it's not cancer, it's an emotional roller coaster. You have to deal with many different obstacles. So after that, um, I started to, you know, weigh down a little bit on the marijuana, smoking a little bit here and there. And then after that, I got depression. And then after the depression, um, I went back to marijuana. And then after that, I let go a little bit of it. It, it was a battle, you know? And uh, I didn't practice temperance with my food until last year in January, I became a pescatarian. So pescatarian. I became, yes, a pescatarian. a pescatarian. It's just, it's like a, a vegan, but eating fish pretty much. Ah, so you so, cheat. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. You're not yeah. really vegan. Okay. No, not really. So yeah, pescatarian. So, so what is vegetarian? I, is it the same? A vegetarian is you can have just like eggs, cheese, and no meat at all. It can't be fish, it can't be cow, it can't be chicken, it can't be no meat. Just like eggs and cheese. Yeah. And then veggies off, of course. Yeah. So that's pretty much being a vegetarian. So I became a pescatarian. I was trying to, you know, like let go of the meat because I was a big big meat eater and cheese. I love cheese. I mean, I'm telling you, I was the worst, the worst. I, had, I started ginger shots. I started going to Whole Foods and I started really, really like a much better diet. Even though I still had meat in it, I was like, okay, it's, it's different. I'm not going to the extreme. So then I had, you know, that beautiful diet for around like two months and a little bit. And then March 17th, I remember it was St. Patrick's Day, right? St. Patrick's Day, which is a lucky day. Um, I had pain in my back, in my lumbar section, and I had to go to the hospital again. And then in my mind, I was like, okay, don't freak out, okay? <laughs> but I was really freaking out. I was freaking out and I didn't want it to be cancer. And I told myself, hey, man, I've started a new diet. Um, I hopefully it's not it, you know? In my mind, I was thinking this. Yeah. But I went to the ER and it was that. It was cancer again, and it had metastasized to my lumbar section. So, at that moment, you would kind of just 
the the feeling was just too overwhelming for me. Yeah. Three Extremely times. overwhelming. Yeah, three times. So I was overwhelmed because the last time my oncologist had told me, after if you get it a third time, there's nothing else we can do for you. Really? And I remember that. Yeah. What was going through your mind, Beatrice? What were you saying to yourself? Um, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to get through this? So I was still positive enough to say, okay, I might have a chance. It's going to be really scary. I have no idea how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to just persevere like I've done my whole life, basically. And I was super scared too. And freaking out, not just for myself, but because I knew that I was going to hurt people that I loved because of my illness, which I hated doing that. Um, so then I basically got out of the ER, just kind of bewildered and confused and just trying to figure everything out like I always did. And I went into a chapel, I remember, there in the hospital, this Baptist hospital in uh, Kendall, Miami. I remember going in and I remember the altar being there. And I went up to the altar and mind you, I was an atheist at that moment. Um, I became an atheist a couple years back. I, I was a Christian when I was younger and I was in and out of church. And I just really got confused. I never did my research about religion, about God, about nothing, about medical or scientific facts or nothing about anything. I was just, you know, enveloped in my own pain and my pain led me to let go of God. So at that moment I said, okay, I'm just gonna go in there and just see how it is. You know, I'm gonna go in the chapel. I have no idea what's gonna happen, but I'm just gonna go in. And I went in and I just silently, you know, I was walking up to the altar. And then I saw this beautiful book. It had pictures of angels. And I said, this is beautiful, you know? I wish it was real. In my mind, I said, this was real. Um, so in that moment, I, I just very innocently just put my hand on that. I think I think it was a Pictionary Bible, like with pictures, it was beautiful. So I placed my hand on that Bible and I said, I wish this was real because I really need help right now. And I looked around and I saw how beautiful and how much, you know, there was faith. There's just faith in that place, in the church, in the chapel. And then I walked out and I just walked out. I walked out. I called then my family members. I called my best friend. I told them it was really tough here for everyone. And I had to then go into, to, into a room. They placed me in a room in the general hospital. And that's when, you know, they had told me just uh, exactly where it was, you know, that the oncologist couldn't do anything else for me. So in that point, I was like, okay, not going to give up, not going to do it. Like I said, I'm a perseverer. I don't give up, you know, even with the ups and downs, don't give up. Mm. So I told my dad, I was like, okay, I started this new diet. So let's, let me just continue it. You know, let me see what I'm going to happen. And I remember, I think I went online and I checked something of like health or something like that. Don't remember quite much about what it was, but I was like, okay, there has to be something to this. And um, I'm just gonna see what happens. Just so dad, go to Whole Foods. That's what I told him. Go to Whole Foods, please buy probiotics, buy ginger shots, buy, you know, the healthiest things you can buy, you know? I kind of gave him a brief idea, a brief uh, checklist. And then when he got there, he was like, okay, I know where everything is, you know, I asked, questions, whatever, um, but I don't know what this one thing is. And he was looking at, like for a probiotic, I think. Okay. And he asked this random lady in this random aisle about a probiotic. And it's so amazing how God works that this lady knew who crispy cancer was. Okay. So she knew who crispy cancer and crispy cancer, if no one knows, he is a cancer survivor. He healed him. Um, through faith and through holistic methods, Colin came through. And he healed it in around two years. Yeah, amazing story. Yeah. So then she knew about him and he told, and, and my father, you know, he's a, he's a talker. He was like, oh, my, my, my daughter is in the hospital. She's uh, just got diagnosed with cancer for the third time. I'm in need of finding a really good probiotic for her. And she said, this is amazing because I know of a guy that cured his cancer. Christian that cured his cancer two years with holistic methods. And my dad was like, great, let's go. Tell me all about it, you know? We got this. 
And mm -hmm. I talked to her on the phone, we video chatted, and I was so happy. I was like, this is incredible. Like, I cannot believe you just met her. Like, this is so amazing. And in that moment, I didn't think about God at any moment. I didn't think about, I was like, wow, well, I'm just like happy. I'm not gonna die, okay, cool. <laughs> so not gonna die, this is amazing. There is hope. And then my dad came back with all the information and I started looking it up online. And then I had a brief idea of what I had to do. So then I started my journey again. I started going to holistic doctors, getting information. I started reading many big books, the PH, um, the PH miracle book, um, uh, the metabolic approach to cancer. Uh, what else? The Gerson therapy. Um, I started watching many videos online. I checked out crispy cancer. I checked out his whole journey, everything he did. And then there I made my own, uh, holistic plan. I started juicing every day. I became a vegan. I just started using a lot of natural herbs. I started, you know, working on temperance with my addiction. It started getting better. And the one thing that I was really missing was my mental health. Okay. And my stress and my stress as well. So after that, I started dealing with that as well. So little by little, you know, things got started getting better. I started to combine spiritual, emotional, and physical to heal. And I started depending more on God. And after a couple months, after like, I think it was a week in, when I got all this information from Crispy Cancer, I realized that God had done everything for me. I don't know who is a believer that's going to be watching this, but coming from being a Christian, then an atheist to a Christian again, and putting my trust in God, he really, he showed himself off. Out of millions of people in the world, my father met this one person that knew this one Christian. And then after that, I start healing everything that I have to heal, little by little. And then I found out about a beautiful organization called the Truth About Cancer Organization. And you know of it, yeah, yeah. amazing. Uh, amazing. Amazing, an amazing yeah. Christian organization. And they're just lovely people and they help you, they guide you, they just, they put everything on the table for you so you don't, you don't feel alone. And that's how I feel too. So basically God gave me all of the healing mechanisms that I could ever have. And I had to pick and choose. So I basically tried them all, you know? I tried them all except the keto one. I did try the keto one because I, I just, I read too much into um, animal protein and the effects that it has. I know that it has helped some people because they've only done it in a little time span. They haven't continued it, which I think is not that bad. If they do it a little time span to stop the cancer, it's not terrible. But to continue with it, not the best idea. So I found out all this amazing information and I was healing and it was like, just, it was powerful. I mean, it's powerful. Coming from not knowing anything to God showing you, hey, look, you're not alone. There's so much more you don't understand. And then I started realizing, okay, I'm going to beat this. But like I said, emotional roller coaster because of my, because of people have cancer, we have PTSD. If you get it a second or third time, there's always going to be PTSD. Like if you were in, let's say, a car accident, it's, it's just, it happens, you know? So I had my PTSD again. I would fluctuate and my faith would, it would stumble. I would stumble with my faith and my trust because I was like, okay, you're doing it all well, but what if this happens? What if this happens? So, and I had to also deal with that. And that's what every cancer patient has to deal with. Yes. Trust. Yeah, trust and trusting that what you're doing, you're doing the best you can. You know, that what you're gonna do is going to bring you to victory. And for me, God has been a huge victorious warrior for me because if I can't do everything, he is the one that pays the difference. So I cheated on my diet, doing this amazing vegan diet. In a year into it, I cheated. I had a couple meat here and there. I know it sounds so bad. It, it sounds, so bad. I mean, to say you cheated, come on. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, um, an strange choice for words because there are people watching this who eat meat, so they're not cheating. But yeah. what works for you seems for me. non meat yeah, um, for me, for food, my right? healing, I, yeah, for my healing process, I had to let go of meat. I had to let go of sugar, you know. So, but I had, you know, I, I cheated with sugar, with uh, a couple of pastelitos because I'm Cuban. So it, in Miami, there's uh, this amazing Cuban pastries. They have guava, coconut, I mean, different. They're just flaking, mm. buttery and delicious, you know. <laughs> and, uh, oh man, I really need the vegan version of that, actually. Um, <laughs> And a lot of sugar. And you know, cancer feeds on sugar, right? Exactly. 
I had, I cheated with that and a little bit of meat, you know, here and there. Um, the meat was probably, you know, like whatever, it was fine. But the sugar was the prop was most of the problem, you know. And also because animal protein, you know, in excess, in excess causes, you know, your genetic coding for genes for cancer to be raised, you know, raised higher. But it was mostly the sugar. So I had to deal with again with my temperance. And I was so naive because it was such an addiction that I had and a temptation for sugar that I was that I had conquered for a year, but then I fell back into it. That I used to pray over the food, like God, please don't let this hurt me. And I knew subconsciously that it was, but I didn't want it to. Okay. So then I was like, okay, this is strange. We have to deal with this. So my cancer metastasized just after two weeks, two weeks of having sugar. My cancer metastasized. And then wow. I had, yeah, I had pain in my back lumbar area. And I thought it was a kidney infection because I told myself I've only had a couple of pastelitos, pastels here and there for two weeks. Like, I don't think it was a big issue, but this is me lying to myself for this temperance addiction, food addiction, sugar, pretty much addiction. <laughs> um, so, I had to go to the hospital again. I went to the hospital again and they told me, no, I'm sorry, it's not a kidney infection. Your cancer metastasized. Even the doctor told me, he's like, whatever you're doing, it's not working. I'm like, no, it is working. I am the problem. You know, I am the one who has to fix this addiction, this food addiction problem, this uh, sweet addiction. So uh, I called a brother from church and he said, okay, we're gonna, you're gonna make this, you're gonna make it through, through this, you know, it doesn't matter. I had five minutes of just, I cried a little and I was like, okay, I'm going to be fine. I just got to deal with this. You know, I got to deal with the whole addiction thing. And, um, and he said, okay, there's an amazing center you can go to. That's going to help you. It's called uh, lifeline wellness center. And it is in Knoxville, Illinois. When was this? So, this was around three weeks ago. Okay. So this is very recent. This is very, very recent, but I had to deal with the temptation with the addiction with emotional trauma from the past, PTSD, et cetera. And at the wellness center, I dealt with all of this. And one of my favorite practices that we did there that I would recommend everyone to do, if you have an illness or not, is you get a piece of paper, all right? On the left side, you, uh, you write down what you want to trash, what mindset, what thought process, what if you want to forgive someone, if you need to realize, I don't know, anything in your life that you got to just like, put on that piece of paper and you need to just realize it, accept it, move on from it. You write it down on the left side of the paper and then on the right side, you're going to replace it with something, something positive, something energetic, something that's going to lift you up daily. And it might be, okay, for me, it was learning and just accepting that I did have, I did need to get rid of this addiction to marijuana for sure. And okay. I need to get rid of that I could not keep giving myself excuses. Yes, marijuana is great for cancer and the oil is great. You know, it's healing, blah, blah, blah. But you know that you have a past history of, of just overusing it. So I have to get rid of it. And there are many other ways to heal cancer with many different herbs. You don't have to use this. So I had to, you know, write down a piece of paper stop you're not going to keep using marijuana it's not good for you it might be for someone else but you have to get rid of it yourself and on the right hand side i said okay you're going to replace it with all these beautiful natural herbs and you're not going to give into smoking or into the oil because you know that if you do this you're going to want to overeat because the process was smoking it or doing the oil too much of it and because i wouldn't you know have temperance with it and then overeat even if it was good food vegan food, I would overeat. And overeating is never good for no reason. That's it. Over it's anything is never good. Never. So then I dealt with, that was one thing that I wrote. And then I had that another thing that I was very personal and I'm very raw, forgiveness. I had to forgive a couple people in my family and also forgiving myself for a couple things as well. Accepting, accepting that I'm not always in control, that God is in control and that you can trust it because I've only reached this far because of um, Tell me, um, the Beatrice you were before compared to the Beatrice you have become today. And, and tell me um, 
also where people can actually get a hold of you, where they can contact you if they want to continue this discussion with you. Um, the features of the work compared to us now is very different. The features of my young self, of the teenage self, out of control, doing whatever she wanted, you know, um, not really using temperance as much, not believing in God, not okay. trusting in God. Uh, the crazy me, let's just put it that way. <laughs> the fun me, the fun crazy me, um, that was still a kind person, but had a lot of traumas, had a lot of subconscious issues that she had to deal with in her life that I could not do. And cancer was kind of an opening door for me, an opening door to realize everything that I had to deal with subconsciously in my life, emotionally, with my family, with myself. And cancer had just led me to that. I had to be for my own healing. Cancer was like, it was It was literally, it's a bad, it's bad, okay? It's bad, it's a terrible thing. But it was literally, I, I can see the good side to cancer because the good side to cancer was me opening up to more of my subconscious emotions. Of realizing everything, dealing with my temperance, trusting more in God. So the before me I had no control, but still wanted to have control, which is kind of weird. You know, I would lapse from control to no control. You know, things that I could control, okay, I would deal with. But my emotions, that was something I could control. And uh, my health. And I never had really much help and nutrition. You know, my mother is a doctor. She would just say, try to eat the best you can, you know. But she wouldn't really have like a strong, firm, you know, like hand, you know. So that was the old me. Kind of crazy, you know, like trying to figure out life. Uh, just going, you know, flowing, you know, normal. And then the new me is I have much more self-control. Okay. I am not uh, like trying. Okay, so before I tried to go through, but I would lose control. It was like an on and off thing. But now I don't lose control as much with my, let's say with food, with my emotions. I have faced the person that I am subconsciously. Good. The person that dealt with so much emotions when I was young, traumas, you know, physical traumas as well. And I'm a more temperate person. I'm a more faithful person. Uh, God is, I can all thank it to him because he has been molding, correcting me, He's been healing me the fastest that I have ever felt that I've been healing. From the year and a half that I was a, a vegan compared to the in the two weeks, less than two weeks, that I that my pain completely was just obliterated. It's because of I dealt with so much subconsciously, emotionally, physically, spiritually, that I really need to dig deeper, dig deeper to figure it out. Okay. So the new me is fresh, is more alert is real with myself much more real with myself. wonderful what I tell everyone whoever's watching that is going through cancer or doesn't want to have cancer or is stuck in the social stigma of cancer you know what can i tell them what have i been through okay firstly believe in yourself believe in yourself know that god loves you that he doesn't want you to be he wants you to heal. You just have to trust him. You have to be real with yourself, with anything that's gone through in your life. If it's either physical, emotional, mental, you have to face it. You have to go through the obstacle. Because if you don't go through the obstacle, you're never gonna know what you're gonna what you're gonna learn from it. How much you're really going to grow. Because I've grown so so much. From the person that I was. Okay. And like I say, you have to go through the obstacle. You might see it as a social stigma. You might have everyone telling you, wow, this is not the way to go. You know, natural is kind of dangerous. Or if you want, if, if you decide to do chemo, okay, chemo is dangerous, blah, blah, blah. But whatever God placed in your path to do that you think is going to help you, try to find the best solution for it. So if you're going to do chemo, let's say, have an amazing diet to go with it. Have emotional support. 
That's it. Realize everything in your life that you have to emotionally uh, and uh, mentally. If you're going to go the natural route, you do the same thing. For me, my personal opinion would be to go through the natural route because I went through chemotherapy. I went through all that and it didn't heal me. It was just covering a symptom. It was taking away the symptom. I didn't deal with the cause. So that's my personal opinion. But okay. Whatever God places in your life to do, then okay. But that's my personal opinion. So with me, you can connect through Instagram and Facebook. And I will be starting a YouTube channel soon to okay. explain all of these beautiful, beautiful God laws on health and temperance and mental, emotional, physical connection for healing. And we, you can connect with me. My um, Instagram name is God is Joy. 94 god is joy 94 and um on your page you can write down my full name which is beatrice Basuto Perez, and that's how you can find me on facebook okay. and uh, i just want to thank everyone that's watching and i just want to tell them to never lose the hope to keep going to persevere and i want to thank you sass because you're doing an amazing an, an amazing <laughs> job really and you're part of my inspiration too thank you oh, i'm so happy yeah you haven't let you haven't let go no. and god is with you and god loves you and you're going to heal and it's going to be amazing and thank you i just want to thank you for the opportunity to be interviewed by you wonderful take back the power of your body raise your vibration you have the power to claim your destiny